Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. Ever lose respect for someone in a matter of 30 seconds? Well, Carissa Thompson is having that moment with a lot of people right about now, after her recent interview on Pardon My Take, where she openly admitted to making up her sideline reports when she couldn't get access to a coach. If you missed it and had no idea what I'm talking about, take a listen to this clip. I, and I've said this before, so I haven't been fired for saying it, but I'll say it again. Um, I would make up the report sometimes because A, the coach wouldn't come out at halftime or it was too late. And I was like, I didn't want to screw up the report. So I was like, I'm just going to make this up because mm -hmm. first of all, no coach is going to get mad if I say, hey, we need to skill stop. Uh, hurting ourselves we needed to be better on third down we yep. need to stop turning the ball Pressure over the quarterback we need, yeah exactly <laughs> and and do a better job of getting off the field like they're not going to correct me on that right. so i'm like it's fine i'll it just make up the report now you would think that the reggie rucker tale would be a cautionary tale for every reporter out there for those who don't know back in 1984 reggie rucker was climbing up the ranks of the color commentators for nbc and was working every week for the network then on the air during a game between the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals, he talked about how he spoke to Bengals head coach Sam Weish over dinner the other night and talked about the keys to the game with him. Seems innocent enough, right? Except there was one small problem. Rucker never had dinner with Weish. Rucker never spoke with Weish. The whole thing was a complete lie. Weish got wind of this after the game, called Rucker out on this, and just like that, his reputation was shot forever and his rise on the announcer depth chart was halted until he eventually got fired from the network. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, somehow, what should be the most obvious cautionary tale for all announcers and for all silent reporters and play-by-play -play people and color commentators was not. Because now, we've got this woman right here, Carissa Thompson, admitting that she just made up sideline reports. It's crazy that she would even admit to something like this on the air. At least Rucker was hoping that no one would catch him in his lie. But here is Thompson, making seven figures a year when you combine her gigs with Amazon and Fox, completely willing to throw it all away and destroy her credibility, as well as ruin the integrity of the broadcast, by saying that she made stuff up. You think the NFL is happy right now with this? You think the NFL is happy that the top person on their Thursday Night Football show is willing to lie? Because it raises the obvious question. What else is she lying about? Her credibility and journalistic integrity is now out the window. Unlike studio hosts like James Brown, with her, you can't take a single word, a single report, or a single quote that she says now without having the doubt in the back of your mind that she's just making the whole thing up. She lost a lot of people's trust. Why she would do this in the first place is insane. But why she wouldn't just take this to the grave is even more insane. We'll see what the backlash from this is in the long term. But if the NFL has anything to say about this, we might have just witnessed someone destroy their career in real time. Because this wasn't just a screw up. This was a conscious choice to undermine the integrity and authenticity of the product at hand and of the profession. But look, I don't want to talk about that and just rant about all of that. Because a lot of people have done that already, and there's not really anything new that I can add on the subject matter. We know that lying on the air and making up reports is bad. Especially with distrust in the media at an all-time high for many people. We know that even if halftime silent reports don't always offer the most substance in the world, that they're still a part of the game. And to make things up is wrong even if you think it's just a little white lie and it's a victimless crime. Because I wanted to go a step further. I wanted to do some digging and find out every single time that Thompson lied about a sideline report. Because once you have this information in the back of your mind, it's painfully obvious when she was fabricating details, when she didn't get access to a coach, and when she was just making things up. 
and you might be able to notice a few common themes with the reports when she's just making things up. So let's dive right in. First off, when exactly did this take place? Well, Amazon was asked for a comment in light of the scandal, seeing as Amazon is one of her current employers, and Amazon said that these reports happened a long time ago. As Amazon said about whether she'd be punished in the immediate aftermath, and if they would issue some sort of punishment on their own accord, she was telling a story from 15 years ago. Alright, that makes things pretty easy. We have a time frame for when these fabrications took place, so we just have to go back 15 years from 2023 and watch the footage. That means that these lies were told in 2008. Yes, 2008 was 15 years ago, and yes, I feel really old. So I watched every game that is still available, where Thompson made a sideline report at halftime, and looked for some common themes. Like she said in the interview, no coach would get mad at her for saying generic coach speak. So you're playing with fire if you say specific things about players or direct quotes. As an example, if I said that I spoke with Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence after Sunday's loss to the 49ers, and he said, we have to play better, even though I never spoke with him, he's not going to be too upset about that lie compared to if I said that he said, my offensive line was garbage, nobody on this team can block, I can't do it all, and I want to be traded because I feel like offensive coordinator Press Taylor is holding me back. And with that in mind, it's very easy to tell when she's lying and when she did these fake reports. Number one, if there was any team that she was just completely making things up about, it was the Detroit Lions. The trio of Ron Pitts, Tony Baselli, and Carissa Thompson usually got the worst game of the week, or one of them. And oftentimes, that involved the Detroit Lions, who ended the season 0-16 and were just brutal to watch in every way. And when you're constantly losing and you're trailing, and when you know that you're a dead man walking and are about to be fired, you might not be willing to talk to reporters, or give the best quotes. And you could tell that, because Thompson just used the same boilerplate template for every Lions game that she did near the end of the season. I'm going to play two games back to back. The first one comes from week 12, when the Lions played the Buccaneers, and lost 38-20 after allowing 21 straight points to go into the halftime break. And the second one comes from Week 16, when the Lions played the Saints and lost 42-7 after trailing 28-7 at the half. See if you notice any similarities. He was happy with the way that the defense has been able to get to Jeff Garcia, but overall he just kept saying, we've got to play better football. That's all he kept saying, repeating that over and over again. Well, guys, I think Coach Marinelli is sick of saying this. He said his team needs to play better. Defensively, they have to get pressure on Drew Brees. I mean, that is quite literally the same thing, word for word. No attempt to even hide it. Talk about needing to play better football and talk about pressuring the quarterback. In the game against the Bucks, Marinelli supposedly talked about keeping the pressure up after getting three sacks in the first half. And in the game against the Saints, Marinelli supposedly talked about getting pressure after getting no sacks in the first half. Seems like a pretty easy template. Lions get pressure? Keep it up. Lions don't get pressure? They need to. Lions are losing? We need to play better football. Blatantly obvious and pretty much the same thing word for word. And that's not even the only time that Thompson did that with Marinelli about needing to pressure the quarterback. Because you also have this week two game against the Green Bay Packers where she said the exact same thing. He's got to get pressure to Aaron Rodgers. Marinelli has to apply pressure to every quarterback. Makes you wonder. Now you might be saying, come on, that's not evidence. Maybe Ron Marinelli actually speaks like that and is like that for every sideline report. And to that I say, are we sure about that? Are we really sure about that? Because it seemed like it was only Carissa Thompson who was saying this about Marinelli that they constantly need to execute and pressure the quarterback. In fact, when you listen to other sideline reporters, it's as though Marinelli is a completely different coach because he never brought that up with them. So I listened to every other halftime report from that 2008 season that I could find involving Marinelli that did not involve Carissa Thompson. And let's just say that Thompson's quotes and the quotes by other sideline reporters that actually did their jobs and didn't make stuff up don't exactly match up. Take a listen. 
Hey guys, I talked to both coaches at halftime. First, Coach Marinelli told me that he is not happy at all with the way they started this game, but he says they've got it down to one score. He is happy with that. I asked him about John Kitna coming unglued as well, and what he told me was simply that Kitna is a competitor and that he's got a fiery spirit, and he didn't call it a tantrum, but he did say that once he started letting him air out, it did look like his team was jelly. Thanks, Matt. I talked to the coaches. Rod Marinelli said this is not the team he expected to see coming off of that bye. He said, really, he gave the credit to the Bears' defense, saying they're doing what we're not doing, which is making plays. I said, are we going to see any adjustments, anything different the second half? He said, we believe in what we're doing. We just have to do it. As for Rod Marinelli, it's exactly what he told his guys in the locker room. We have been here before. We're being too tentative. Get out there, let loose, fly around. He wants to see more motion and, of course, better field position. Tavares Jackson will be his quarterback in the second half. And on the other side of that, Rod Marinelli is saying that that will alter our game plan a bit because of his mobility and the way that Tavares Jackson runs around. And Marinelli said we went for it on fourth and short because we need touchdowns. The way our defense is playing, if we get a touchdown, we can separate this game. Number two, when in doubt, establish the run. That's what a lot of coaches talk about most of the time anyway, right? The importance of getting the ground game going because it churns clock and gives your defense a breather because it keeps you ahead of schedule, and because it frees up the number of people in the box so the passing game can open up. Plus, many coaches believe that a solid ground game can establish the play-action pass. And Carissa Thompson absolutely loved talking about, in incredibly vague terms, establishing the run. If the ground game wasn't working, talk about how they need to do that. Don't mention any specific quotes about it, just say that the coach said that they want to establish the run. Bonus points if a nice run just happened on the play before they cut to her live. These are two separate clips. One came from a week two game between the Lions and the Packers, where starting running back Ryan Grant only had 12 rushing yards on nine carries in the first half. So a bad showing with under two yards a carry. Another one came from a week seven game between the Vikings and the Bears, where Bears starting running back Matt Forte only had eight yards on six carries. So a bad showing with under two yards of carry. See if you notice any similarities with these reports. From McCarthy, knowing that the line has to continue to do their job and they have to establish the run on the Green Bay side of the ball. He wants to establish that run like what they're trying to do right now. There's the establish the run piece. And isn't it a bit odd that both times it happened, it came when the team in question was winning the game? and their starting running back was averaging 1.3 yards per carry on the dot? Seriously, 12 rushing yards on 9 carries is 1.3 yards. That's what Ryan Grant had. 8 yards on 6 carries is 1.3 yards, which is what Matt Forte had. Same stat line for all intents and purposes? Winning the game and thinking about the end game with the clock? Same exact script to use as the sideline reporter. But having said all of that about Marinelli at establishing the run, if you're not convinced just yet, perhaps the most egregious example of this absolute lie comes in week 10 in the game between the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons, where she not only said that the Falcons needed to establish the run, as is tradition, but she was so focused to the script that she was watching a completely different game than everyone else. Take a listen to this sideline report after the Falcons only had 39 rushing yards on three yards per carry in the first half, 20 of which came on one play. But like I'm going to tell you, he told me, look for us to run, run, and run some more in the second half. We've already seen it. All right, so that seems to be the common theme with Thompson. Establish the run, and if the team just had a running play, mention that play and say something like that. Except, what the heck is she talking about here? Seriously, what the heck is she talking about? What you're about to watch are the two plays that happened in the second half, the only two plays, before Thompson got on the air. Before Thompson said, you're already seeing them do that and establish the run. See if something seems, well, just a little bit off. The kick, this will be Norwood. Norwood using the speed to just outflank the Saints defenders and takes the kicker head on and believe me the kicker knows play action to Turner look at deep checks it down instead to Turner and Turner is hit immediately
Look for us to run, run, and run some more in the second half. We've already seen it. Yeah. Where was the running play? Where was the freaking running play? We've already seen it? See what? There was one play, and it was a pass. It's like me saying that in order to do a better job as a baseball team, we need to start being more patient and not swinging at the first pitch. And we're already seeing that as the first batter swings at a pitch outside the zone for strike one. This is one that you can clearly tell she made up and stuck to the template without any awareness for what's going on. Because unless Carissa Thompson can't tell the difference between a run and a pass, and I highly doubt that's the case, she wouldn't say anything like that if she actually got her quotes. And maybe she's right. No coach is going to get mad at her for making something up like that, or if you're winning the game, it's all about establishing the run. Even if it makes no sense in the context of the current game. And it's funny, because when you look at the reports where you can clearly tell that she did speak to the coaches, and you look at the reports like the ones I showed before, where she clearly didn't, it's like night and day. So you can't even make the argument that this is just how she did her reports. Take a listen to this one from Mike McCarthy during a game between the Packers and the Jaguars. For Coach McCarthy, on the other hand, you guys, he was so adamant about a communication breakdown. We saw that right before the half with Finley. He said a headset actually broke. It's all about communication on the Packers side. Like, that one's legit. There were times where she was able to gather intel and insight and specific quotes, and it showed the value of what a good and ethical sideline reporter brings to the table. A headset breakdown? That's a pretty big deal. We never would have known that if not for a sideline reporter doing their job and busting their butt off and actually getting the scoop down on the field. But when you compare that to all the times where she not only used generic code speak, but use the same exact template for the same exact situations word for word, even when it didn't necessarily make a ton of sense. And yeah, it's painfully obvious which reports from that 2008 season that she's talking about. Now look, there are people on both sides of the aisle with this issue here. It's a highly controversial topic. On one hand, you've got those people saying, what's the big deal? It's sideline reporting. It's not like we're talking about war or politics. It's sideline reporting for a football game. It's not a big deal in the slightest bit. She didn't say anything harmful. She just used coach speak that the coaches were probably thinking and were going to say anyways. This was a completely victimless crime and it happened 15 years ago. So don't make a mountain out of a molehill here. Plus, sideline reporters offer nothing to the game as it is, which personally, they offer a lot to the game and can offer a lot of cool breakdowns, but that's beside the point. On the other hand, You've got those saying, wait a second, time out. You're completely missing the forest for the trees here. She is a journalist. When you are a sideline reporter, you are a journalist first and foremost. And the number one rule of journalism, and the number one rule when it comes to ethics, is you do not lie. You do not misattribute quotes to people that never actually said them. You do not make stuff up, and that should go without saying. Plus, it's a slap in the face to every current sideline reporter, because now, any silent reporter, whether they do their job right or not, you have in the back of your mind, wait a second, are they just making it up like Carissa Thompson? And on top of that, she just spat in the face of every woman that came before her that paved the way for her, because this is a notoriously tough field for women to get into, and Carissa Thompson just decided to break the golden rule of journalism here. So again, you have both sides of the aisle here. Some people say it's not a big deal. Some people say this is a very big deal. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. But I will say this, based on every video that I've done over the years about reporters lying and how it backfired for them, and based off of the evidence that we've seen, and based off of my comments so far in this video, you probably have a pretty good idea of where I stand on this issue. Will Amazon do anything about this? Will Fox do anything about this? Will Thompson lose her job? Honestly, I don't know. She didn't address it on the air during the ravens bengals game last night if you're watching at the time of this video. And Amazon said that it happened 15 years ago. So it's ancient history. However, the NFL has forced networks to make programming changes to paint them in a better light. Like what we saw with ESPN with Playmakers and Jacked Up. Which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. So if the NFL said, listen, we don't want someone sitting at a desk at our flagship program who's reporting on the news, who's just going to make stuff up. 
things might be a heck of a lot different. You never know. Regardless, when she went on part of my take, Carissa explained it all. And it might end up costing her in a big time way. If not her job, then at the very least, her credibility. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.